Hello everyone, welcome to another homebrew update vlog thing. My name is Troy, I am your host. And if you've been wondering why I've been gone for the past three months or so, it's because I've been busy with work and school and other things like that. So I started school this month, I'm back on the 14th actually, so literally earlier this week. And I have been crammed with my schoolwork lately. It's just been non-stop, literally getting home from work and then doing schoolwork, getting home from work, doing schoolwork, doing schoolwork, and then going to work. It's, it's non-stop, but I am at least back in school, which is nice. The other few months before January, November and December, I actually did plan on making a video, but I never got around to it because on the Saturday I planned on recording it, something came up, so I couldn't do it. So yeah, that's that. I do have some things to talk about when it comes to the homebrew side of things, but I just kind of want to give you a hello type of deal, an update on what's been going on, and also when it comes to the next homebrew update stuff, I also don't know when I'll be getting it done because obviously school. I'm literally fitting six months worth of school or four or five months worth of school into literally a month and a half. So that's just fun. With that being said, let me go ahead and give you an update on what has been going on. A lot of the stuff that I actually had for the last video I was trying to make has now been turned old. So I will not be covering that, but I'll be covering just the big main topics that you really need to know about. So the very first thing is going to be on the Nintendo Switch. This is still old, but it's still very important. 6.20 firmware has actually been released, the official firmware. And it has already been cracked, which is great. I am actually running it on my Switch, so that is very fun. And it works. All custom firmwares work for that I know of, that I've checked last. I know they were having problems with the Raj NX or Ray, whatever it's called. Um, so just make sure that I'm going to make sure that that is updated and put a link in all that in the description for you to whatever you need to know about it. Um, that's all for the Switch. The next one was going to be the PlayStation Vita, which we saw a lot of stuff going on. Especially with my last video I made, a lot of people have been wanting more Vita stuff. So, here you go. Version, official version 6.70, not 6.70, 3.70 has been released on the PlayStation Vita and TV. So, with that being said, do not update because, obviously, you don't want to you know patch anything that's also that could be vulnerable with your system i can't remember who it was but someone is actually someone that has said that they are working on making games run on six points making 6.69 i can't say that making 3.69 games run on lower firmwares he actually has got it to work and it is called refood the decryption keys in 3.70 are still the same as what they were in 3.69, which is great, meaning refilled, refood still works. And also the flow has stated on Twitter uh, that the 3.69 exploit that he had planned for 2019 still should work on 3.70, which is amazing. So people, just because you are on say 3.69, don't update to 3.70, stay on 3.69 because there's no point since you could even run 3.70 games on 3.69. <sighs> okay, with that said, the next thing I wanna talk about is the, let's talk about PlayStation 4. Um, Celeste Blue, I never say his name right. He has actually put out a new custom firmware exploit thing for 4.74. These are the people who have Blu-ray drives that do not work. Uh, those Blu-ray drives, if you don't have one that works, you cannot update to the newest firmware, which is really stupid. So for the people who are specifically 4.74, can now have their own homebrew and do all the other stuff. I'm pretty sure it is a full kernel exploit, so you can do whatever you want, just like 5.50 and exploits and things like that. Next thing I wanna to talk to you about is the awful PlayStation Classic. Granted, with what they now call Bleem Sync, you are now able to run any PlayStation game on the PlayStation Classic, which is amazing. All it takes is a USB drive, just like with the mini SNES or mini NES. It literally just takes that, you get your game files and whatnot, 
and you put them on a USB drive and there you go. You run them that way. Obviously there's more preparation for it than just that, but in general it works. I've tested it myself. I ran Spyro the Dragon on it. I actually have a picture of that somewhere. Anyway, I ran Spyro the Dragon on it and it works well. I am happy. Um, I myself already put my PlayStation Classic up because I don't really have any else to use for it. I have a modded PlayStation 1 with the, that's modded with the chips that I could run any games I want on it already anyway, so I just use that whenever I need to. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for holding out and just waiting for another video. Thank you for commenting actually all the stuff. The last video I put up is actually becoming closely to one of the biggest videos I made, which is really good. I thank you all for that. And just like I always say in all my other videos, if you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that little bell icon just so you don't miss any of my future videos. And guys, with that, I will see you next video.